So here we have the ESP8266 uh, development board. In fact, I'm using a development board, which is probably overkill. I could probably use an ESP01, uh, which is a very minimal module. Um, but I'm just using this just for the ease of powering it off USB, which I could power that off USB as well. But whatever. I'm using an ESP chip here. This is about $3. Uh, and again, here is the transmitter. This is 400 and... Um, 33 megahertz. Uh, you can see I've connected a little wire here, just soldered it on there as an antenna, and that just gives it a little more range so it can reach across the house. Now, I've had this set up for a week or two. It's been working great, but you know it's just kind of sitting here on my counter. So what I need to do is make an enclosure for that. So I don't have a 3D printer or anything like that. So I'm gonna make mine out of wood. So I'm gonna go and do that now. So here we go. Uh, uh, so hopefully this all fits in here because I kind of just eyeballed it all outside. I didn't actually uh, come and measure anything. And uh, hopefully uh, the antenna still works while it's inside the box. If not, I'll just have to sneak it out, maybe the power hole. Hopefully I made the power hole big enough. Um, yeah, looks like I did. There we go. So that goes through there. And again, this is not beautiful, but it's better than having all this sitting on my counter all the time. So. I'm going to plug that back in. There we go. Shove the ESP in there. Probably could use shorter wires. Shove all that in there. And hope the boards don't short each other out. Make sure they're not touching. And I, I think I will let the antenna stick out the back here just because, and I should be able to, let's see, that's the other way, just like that. So again, uh, not the prettiest design, but I'd much rather have a little wood box sitting on my counter than a little microcontroller and transmitter. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if this works. So let's test this out real quick. I have three buttons on my web interface here, and I'm gonna click the one that says Office. Lights turn on. If I click it again, the lights turn off. Again, here we go. Office on, office off. And it works pretty quick. Okay, so let's go over this project a little more uh, in detail. So, first off, check out the links in the description. I have a link there to my GitHub page where I have both the code for the Arduino and my web interface now, or, or the ESP in this case, the ESP. So click the link in the, in the uh, description for hardware, go to the ESP folder, uh, I think I call it TXRX for transmit and receive, uh, and then there's an outlets folder. And there you'll find the code as well as the interface. Now the interface theoretically could be running on the ESP. There's very limited memory on there, but I could also hook up an SD card to that. Um, but I chose not to do that. The ESP, the code is very, very simple, and I didn't hardwire or hard code the codes for the outlets in there. I could have, I could have said, you know, 
this is the code for that. So when you receive this signal, send this signal out through that. I decided not to do that. What it does is it looks at a variable in the HTTP request. That way, if I want to make changes to it, I can. if I want to add an outlet or change the code or I get new outlets, I don't have to take that ESP out and reprogram it. All I have to do is change the web interface to send a different code. So if you look at the code, that's how that works. So very, very simple. I also chose not to put the web interface on there. Again, I didn't feel like putting an SD card and I would have to be very minimal. And I wanted to use some CSS and pre, I wanted it to look nice. So I'm, I'm hosting this on a web server. I didn't have to do that, uh, which is very, very simple. And it just sends, when I click that, it sends a AJAX request, a HTTP request to that. So even though the, I can bring up this interface anywhere in the world. In fact, if right now, it might change years from now, filmsbychris.com forward slash scripts, forward slash outlets, forward slash switches will bring you to this interface. You'll see exactly it. You'll see what codes it's sending, but it won't go anywhere because it will only work on my local network the way it's set up. So I can bring this interface up anywhere, but it only works on a local network. But it's very, very great. If I want to change the look and feel of the buttons, or if I want to have more than one interface, I can have this interface or a different looking one. I can have an unlimited number of interfaces because all they do is send an HTTP request to that, that device if you're on my local network. And again, I can add other plugs because I can change the codes here and not have to pull that chip out, plug it in my computer, and reprogram it. Now, uh, drawbacks to this, and this doesn't have anything to do with the ESP or the way we're transmitting, or it does have to do with the way we're transmitting away, is these outlets uh, are only receivers. So I send a signal to it and it turns on, or I send a signal to it and it turns off, you know, depending on what signal I send. It does not communicate back. So in the web interface, I can troubleshoot and say, okay, I can communicate with the ESP. And the ESP communicates back by, by echoing out what number you send to it, so you know that that's working, and you know that it's sending a signal, you can test that, but nothing comes back from the, the outlet. So if for some reason it's out of range or, or it's not working, I click here, it says office lights on, the lights may have not come on. Uh, if it's out of range or something like that. In fact, right now, because I did it on my phone and not here, it says office lights are on, but they're off right now. So the way I wrote this interface is every time you come to it, the switches automatically say off, even if the lights are on. So if the light is on and you want to turn it off, you're going to have to click the button twice when you first come there. Um, the only way around this that I can think of is if, it's, if you put some sort of light sensor or something in line with the power that communicates with the ESP, but that's just, just overkill. Uh, you could do that. So this is a drawback compared to the other option I was talking about where I had a smart outlet uh, that ran Linux that I was able to SSH into and set up a web server and interface with it that way. That one could communicate back and forth and it could tell me whether the light's on or off. There's no communication back and forth. It's just we send a signal to the outlet and hope that it got there and it does what it's supposed to do. Um, but once you have it set up, if they're in range, they're pretty much always going to work, you know, unless you move the antenna or something like that. So yeah, the biggest drawback is every time I turn this on, it's going to say all the lights are off, even if they're not. And you'll have to double click one of the buttons to turn them off if they're already off. But it's great that I can sit here. I can sit here at my computer. It starts getting dark. I don't even have to bring out my phone. I can just bring up this web interface here and click it and turn on lights here or in the other room. Another great thing about this, again, it's since it's HTTP requests, I can send wget or curl I can use to communicate with this ESP as because it's just anything that can connect to the internet can communicate with these devices if they're on the local network. So um, if I know sunset is at a certain time, I can set a cron job on, on my desktop computer or I'd probably do it on my pogo plug, which is my server running all the time, to run at 8 o'clock. All it does is wget command, sends it to that uh, ESP and it turns on the lights. And then I can say, okay, 10 o'clock, whatever time I normally go to bed, it can have them shut off, uh, which is great, or, or whatever you want. So. Again, I set the ESP so it's very, very simple. It just retrieves the code and whatever code you send, it sends out. So now you can do anything on your desktop, phone, tablet, server, whatever, and just using basic HTTP requests, it sends it there. So again, you can set uh, a loop to, to do something at a certain time, or a cron job would be better if you know a certain time. You can say Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 a.m., turn on the lights, and at 10 o'clock, turn them off. Um, 
and it's great. So I actually have my office lights set on that. Uh, you can also have your computer check, you know, uh, sunset happens at different times. I can set my computer to check when is sunset today? Okay, 10 minutes before that, turn on the lights. So year round, the lights are always coming on 10 minutes before sunset, even though that time's changing, if you want to get that in depth with it. But again, since I set up the ESP very, very simple, other computers, and it can be a number of computers, could be doing all the other heavy lifting. And I never have to, I never have to pull that out of that box to reprogram it. It's all set. The only time I need to pull it out is if it broke, I need to put a new one in there. So anyway, uh, I've talked long enough. I've talked too long. <laughs> but you're thinking the same thing. I want to thank you for watching. Yeah, this is part of a series. Hopefully you watched the previous videos. Uh, and I will talk more about troubleshooting uh, in future videos. Right now, We've talked about finding frequencies of devices, controlling devices, receiving those signals. We, we've looked at all that. We're going to look, talk a little bit more about troubleshooting, but I hope you're enjoying this series. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the future videos. Uh, and if you like my videos, be sure to check out my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And there you can search the videos from both my channels. This is my hardware channel. I have a channel that focuses mainly on software, if you're interested in that sort of thing. Lots and lots, thousands of videos there. I've been doing that for years. Um, if you do like my videos here or my other channel or both and you watch them regularly, think about becoming a supporter over at Patreon. Um, Patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Again, a link in the description to that. And there, you can become a supporter for as little as a dollar a month. It really helps out a lot. Uh, there are different levels of rewards. And um, if you can't support me that way, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. That helps out a lot. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.